This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The Living God is your father and your friend, and God loves you with a love that will not let you go. How do you think of love? What is that indescribable feeling that sweeps over you when you first feel love for someone? Where does it come from? What is it that a mother feels when she gazes into the eyes of her baby with such profound affection? What is it that you see on the faces of an old grandmother or grandfather who still love each other and have loved each other all through the years? What is it that young lovers feel for each other when they become enraptured with each other and would do almost anything to assure the other's happiness in life? What is it that a good father or mother feels for a child first going off to kindergarten or to high school or away to a university? That undiscourageable goodwill that springs from somewhere deep in the human soul. That feeling that makes all of life seem right. That assurance of better things, that certainty of higher realities, that comforting, astonishing, dynamic, and yet indescribable experience, which the dictionary calls love. What is love? The Britannica World Language Dictionary calls it, quote, a strong, complex emotion or feeling causing one to appreciate, delight in, and crave the presence or possession of another and to please or promote the welfare of the other, end of quote. The definitions of love are endless, but the greatest understanding of the simple, basic, essential of love is this concept, that love is the desire to do good to someone. This is how God loves you. God desires good for you. God wants every good thing for your life. God's attitude toward you is totally beneficent toward you. God cares for you with a love superseding even the love of a good parent toward a son or daughter. God is the ultimate parent of all of time and space. And God's love for you is boundless. If there are ever days when you feel as if you have little or no value at all, as if your life is essentially worthless and there is little hope for improvement, remember that your ultimate hope in life is God, because God can accomplish that which human beings cannot. God loves you with a love that gives a new sense of self-worth to you once you believe it. You will find a new and unexpected ability to do that which you thought was undoable once you begin to do it in vital partnership with God. You are not alone upon this earth. You do not face your problems as a solitary warrior battling the dragons of your life without help. For the living God, your father and your friend, loves you and cares for you and will join in to help fight these battles on your behalf if you will but invite God's presence into your life on the side of the right and the good. And if you will seek above all things to be part of the purposes of God on this earth, and if you will ask God's will and guidance in everything you undertake, you will discover that God's purposes are the highest good you can know. God's will for you is the eventual actualization of all your potentials, the true fulfillment of all of the deepest dreams and aspirations of your soul. God wants for you a life of peace and purpose and joy, a life filled with love and laughter to counterbalance the pain and grief which inevitably come in the living of human life. God has all these good things in store for you, and when you seek the will of God, you are in fact seeking for all of that. The will of God is in truth the highest purpose for you as a human being. God has conceived for you an ideal life, an existence which will maximize the best that you can do and be and become, given your time and your talents. The will of God simply feels right. And the more deeply you find it and do it, the more completed as a person you will become. Without God, you will feel like a tree without roots, as if you're lacking a proper connectedness with everything, because you were created by God and for God, and nothing but God can satisfy the craving in your soul for God. There's an old European proverb, blessed are the homesick, for they shall come home. And so it is with you. Deep in your soul, you are homesick for God, and life will never feel really right to you until in living faith you come home to God and establish or restore or renew or deepen 
your relationship with God and begin to live as the son or daughter of God you really are and as you really long to live within your soul. I once wrote this brief prayer, Grow me, God, grow me on the trellis of your will. A trellis is a crossbarred lattice work which supports vines or flowering plants and which directs and defines the patterns of their growth through the months of the years. God not only wants you to grow, God wants you to grow in the best direction, in the right way, and for some meaningful purpose. So it is with God's will for your life. God wants you to grow, to improve, to progress day by day in your life, but in the right fashion. When you say to a little boy, someday you'll grow up to be a big boy, you're not saying you want him to become a 600-pound adolescent. You mean healthy, controlled, and proper growth. Cellular division and cell growth are part of normal life, but when cell growth becomes abnormal, out of control, it may become cancer. The rampant and uncontrolled growth of vines and vegetation can become an impenetrable jungle, a forest smothered in its own vegetation. Hence the prayer, grow me, God, grow me on the trellis of your will. God has a plan for your healthy, balanced, controlled, and meaningful growth through your life. Equipoised growth in body, mind, and spirit. Growth in soul, in philosophy, in social, emotional, physical, psychological, and every other aspect of your life. That is good and meaningful growth. Satisfying and fulfilling growth. Controlled and healthy growth. Not the haphazard and erratic, unbalanced and unhealthy sort. It is the good, true and beautiful kind of total growth which the living God, your father and your friend, desires for your life. For all your days on this earth, God has planned for you not only an earthly life of earthly growth, but an eternal life of eternal growth and progress throughout God's great domain, the universe of universes. What a thrilling adventure lies before you, beginning right here and right now. The loving and all-knowing God who created all reality and who fills your future with potentials and possibilities beyond your ability even to conceive or imagine it. God has wonderful things for your life, remarkable adventures of the inner life lying before you and within you. The word growth is from the old English growan, meaning to increase in size by the assimilation of nutriment, progress toward maturity, to flourish or thrive. That is what the living God, your Father, desires for you. God wants you to grow in a balanced, sane, and wonderful way, to become all that the living God created and designed you to become. Spiritual growth is a real phenomenon, a genuine process, just as physical growth is increasing in size by the assimilation of nutrients, the progress toward maturity, flourishing and thriving. So it is with spiritual growth. It will increase as you assimilate spiritual nourishment. That means prayer, worship, loving and being loved, service and kindness, dedicating yourself to truth and beauty and goodness, faith and hope, and loving all other personalities, the love of God and the love of others, were Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments. And as you learn to love better and better, you will grow in your soul's understanding of all things spiritual. Keep open to spiritual growth. Pray for it every day. God has planned for you an endless process of eternal growth, an ongoing adventure of actualizing more and more meanings and values, deeper and deeper understandings of all the important aspects of human life, preeminently your relationships, your human interactions with other people, and above all, your supreme relationship with God who loves you. The more you learn to love God, the more you'll love human beings. And the more you love human beings, the deeper your capacity to love God. Ultimately, you will discover that the supreme delight of life is loving God and loving others. And that doing all the good you are able in all the ways you are able, at all the times you are able, in all the places you are able, will provide a powerful spiritual growth impetus. Every day of your life on this earth and your eternal life throughout this universe. Healthy growth simply feels good. It feels right. As in the prayer, grow me, God, grow me on the trellis 
of your will. There is peace like a river and joy like a running stream in the exquisite experience of growing hourly, daily, and yearly in the wise and wonderful will of God and loving God and serving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. May you find that joy, the joy of finding and knowing God and loving and serving God increasingly for all the days of your life. May you find it beginning right here and right now because that is how you were truly created to live. If you're interested in these things, the sorts of matters discussed on this broadcast, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man. All this literature, yours, no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>